Hey everyone, it's Luke here from Pretty Tutor. Tutor. Are you looking to add some urban flair to your landscape work or struggling to get the right layout for a concept piece? Well, in this video, I'll show you how to quickly create a landscape buildings with adjustable heights, allowing you to easily achieve the perfect scene layout. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. All right, so to start off, we'll first of all need to make use out of our cube in order to set ourselves up with some building structures. And we don't need to complicate it. We just need a couple of overall silhouettes that we'll later be able to make use out of. So for us to do that, we're just going to grab ourselves this cube and I'm just going to scale it up. I'm going to click S Z and just scale it up like so. And that's one of the shapes is pretty much done. I'm going to hit G Z, drag it upwards like so a little bit and We'll also need a variant out of it, so I'm going to make sure I duplicate this. I'm going to grab this one, I'm going to hit Shift D, G, Y, going to put it off to the side, and we have two building overall silhouettes. We could make this a little bit smaller, for, for example, but I reckon that's going to be all right since we're going to be using different textures. And as for the textures itself, a great area to find free textures is going to be textures.com. If we were to just go on to its library, search for building, we're going to find a lot of different variations out of our uh, generic type of building structures. So I'm going to grab uh, one red, for example, and one gray and I'm going to mix them up. So these ones are already set up with PBR. There are ones where it's just a simple texture. But yeah, I'm already going to use uh, these ones over here. And I don't even need to make use out of all of the textures like these ones over here. I just need to make use out of a color map. And I will make use out of a massive texture map since it's going to be from a distance. It's not going to be quite as visible for like generic type of scenes that we use. So I'm just going to download this one as low resolution and the massive map ge generic type of resolution as well. And then and going back, I'm also going to make sure I grab another variation. So yeah, making sure that we have two variations again, albedo and a massive texture map. I already got one set up in regards to the texture, so I'm going to make use out of that. So as you can see over here, this is what I have. And now we can go back onto the Blender pile and start setting up uh, the overall texture. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to, first of all, go into shading mode. We're going to start by making sure we apply a new material to each one of the buildings. I'm going to select the first building over here, I'm going to go on to the material properties tab, I'm going to delete this material and create a new one like so. I'm going to add a new material overall, call this building one mat, just like that. Then we're going to go back onto our textures and I'm going to start dragging these in. So yeah, we're going to start with this one, albedo. We're going to drag the albedo version and the emissive version of the textures. We can now minimize these and get ourselves uh, these type of nodes. We're going to make sure that we plug in the albedo onto the base color, like so. And the emissive, we're going to plug this into the emission texture map over here. So we're going to get ourselves this sort of result. It's currently stretched out, so we're going to fix that in a bit. But now though, we're going to work at two buildings at once. I'm going to set the second one as well. I'm going to delete this material, I'm going to set up a new material for it. I'm going to call building to mat like so. I'm going to do pretty much the exact same type of a variation as we did before. Grabbing in albedo, grabbing in emissive like so. And minimizing down this window. And of course, just like we did previously, going to set up base color and an emission like that. And yeah, one more thing that I forgot to mention is that we also have a mission strength, which uh, we're going to actually sort it out right away. You know, usually the mission uh, doesn't quite look quite as right if we were to just leave it as is. So what I tend to do is just increase it to a value of two to three. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually grab them both and set them strength for it to be a mission strength for free. Like so you can see the window is glowing much better. And now let's go back and sort out ourselves with in regards to the textures themselves. We're going to make sure we do so within UV editing window. So let's go ahead and go into it. I'm also going to want to make sure we see the textures on the right hand side. So for us to do that, I'm going to hover my mouse over the top section of these tabs, I'm going to just scroll and we can now just kind of get ourselves the material tab for the viewport shading. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I'm going to make sure that we are actually within the object mode, I'm going to hit tab, select both of these objects. Now I'm going to hit tab again. 
and this way we'll be able to edit them both and actually i almost forgot we also need to reset the scale for both of these buildings i'm going to hit tab again to make sure we are within object mode going to hit shift and a and reset up or apply the scale like so so this way when we are unwrapping these buildings none of the distortion would happen i'm going to hit tab with both of these buildings selected now i'm going to go on the left hand side hover my mouse going to hit a going to hit u and smart uv project click ok with the default settings then i'm going to get ourselves a nicely set up type of uv scales but by default it's not quite there yet in regards to the pattern itself i'm going to hit s and going to scale this up and as you can see we are getting a much nicer type of a setup and when doing this i try to get myself the corners to be kind of aligning with the overall texture a little bit to get this sort of a result and yeah that's pretty much it in regards to that we also have some texture on the top so we probably want to take these out the easiest way to do that is just to apply new material so i'm going to select this building over here going to go to the material tab click on the plus symbol over here create a new material and just call it the building top something like that now i'm going to go on to edit mode hit free make sure i have the face selected and make sure that we have building top selected for the material assign this and we're going to get this sort of a look which we're going to change up the color through these settings over here we're going to click on this one for the base color lower down the color to something quite dark and make sure that the roughness is also uh, increased otherwise it's going to be too glossy for the overall building so let's go ahead and increase something to a value of 0.8 is going to do the job then we're going to go back out of the edit mode by hitting tab we're going to go select this another building select the top of the building and make sure we add a new material we're going to this time use this tab over here to browse material tab and select building top and now we're going to with this selected assign the material for our selection and we're going to get ourselves this sort of a look now for us to create an actual landscape of these buildings we're going to first of all grab both of them and make sure we set them up in a collection so for us to do that i'm first of all actually going to rename these ones so i'm going to select this one i'm going to just double click on it call this building one and the other one i can call it building two like so I'm going to create a new collection and grab both of them into this collection and i might as well rename the collection to something like buildings so now we can move both of these buildings out of the way going to grab them gz move them out of the way i'm going to create a, a simple plane that we can make use out of so i'm going to hit shift and a going to create a plane like so upscale it quite a bit and for this plane we're going to actually set ourselves up with a simple dark material so i'm going to click new i'm going to simply create a darkish type material that's going to be completely rough we don't want any type of glossiness in regards to this type of setup then we're going to make use out of the particle emitter so let's go ahead and use particle properties we're going to click on a plus symbol over here we're going to set it up to be a hair type of particles like so it's going to give us this sort of result obviously we don't want the hairs themselves we want to make sure we set it up with the building meshes so we're going to go on to the viewport display tab and there is something called a display as there is a tab called render we're going to go ahead and open this up and right away we're going to change render as instead of path we're going to select collection which will allow us to set ourselves up with a building instant collection we'll need to change this up to be buildings collection like so and we should be getting ourselves a nice type of a setup which i actually just realized that the plane itself that i'm setting it up is within the collection tab for the buildings itself we need to make sure that this plane is being dragged out onto our other collection like so and now it's going to work properly so there we have it and of course all the buildings are rotated sideways so we're going to fix that up real quick we're going to make sure that within a particle system within this uh, entire plane we have advanced options selected we're going to go then all the way down and find a rotation tab that's the one let's go ahead and enable it and change this to be global y i believe there you go it's going to give us this sort of a result now we have an issue in regards to the buildings actually being partially underneath so for us to fix that what i like to do is simply grab both of these buildings like so go into the edit mode by hitting tab and 
grab all of them and you can see the dots in the middle these are the origin points so we got to make sure that they at the very bottom i'm just going to simply click gz and grab them upwards like so this way we're going to grab all of these buildings and make sure that they're positioned normally at our landscape and as you can see now we have one more issue in regards to the overall height so the easiest way to fix that would be to simply grab those buildings and make more duplicates out of it within our buildings collection so yeah we're going to make sure we use the same pretty much the same type of a situation in regards to grabbing them and moving the origin points i'm going to hit shift d gx to make a duplicate which as you can see within a buildings collection we created a duplicate out of it and I'm going to, with these two selected, I'm going to hit shift. And with them selected, I'm going to hit GZ and move them down like so. So they're going to be partially within underground. But as you can see, right now, we are able to break away the surface, the overall type of tension within our particle selection. We can do as many variations as we want in regards to the height this way. And it's pretty easy and simple to do. I'm actually going to go into the modeling mode. And real quick, I'm going to check how the rendered view looks like and it's pretty much looking quite nice but if we want to break away the overall tension the overall surface of these it's actually quite simple to do we're going to select on the plane itself i'm going to go into edit mode and i'm going to add some edge loops and then essentially move it and sculpt it out in regards to the overall shape so yeah let's go ahead and do that i'm going to hit Control and r in order to get an edge loop enabled, I'm going to scroll up a couple of times to get a couple of extra edge loops. Hit the left mouse button, hit right mouse button, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Control R, scroll it up, uh, left click, right click, and that way we get ourselves a lot of these extra vertices to play around with, which now we can make use out of. I'm going to go ahead and go into the selection mode for vertices. I'm going to grab one of them like so, and I'm actually going to make use out of the average proportional editing like so. With this button enabled, we can click GZ and we can grab them uh, multiple at once. I'm going to scroll up while moving this or scroll down sorry there you go we're going to create ourselves a sort of a, hu a hill hump we can see how it affects the overall landscape if we were to hit tab and see that it now has a uh, much of an interesting shape like so we can break this overall shape even more if we want to and grab uh, get ourselves a real nice type of a landscape setup for our overall type of background within the scene or whatnot so yeah that's pretty much it in regards to how to set up a nice landscape we can even add a quick type of a light just to see and preview it how it looks like and i'm gonna go ahead and add a sunlight which i think yeah it added within a buildings uh, type of collection let's make sure it's actually set up within our normal collection not the buildings tab there you go and there we go we're going to have ourselves a real nice and easy type of setup in regards to these buildings over here so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the like button also make sure to subscribe to the channel to get updates on our latest videos and yeah, happy modeling everyone.